Hey everyone, this is Mark from the UC San Diego Makerspace. I'm in our metal shop here, and today we're gonna to talk about MIG welding. So what is MIG welding? MIG welding stands for metal inert gas and is a form of arc welding. And is also commonly referred to as a hot glue gun for metal. So the welding gun feeds out wire, which creates electrical arc with your workpiece. This electrical arc melts the workpiece and the filler wire into the workpiece, creating your weld. The welding gun also provides shielding gas, which protects your weld from corrosion as it is molten hot. The MIG welding process that we typically use is good for steel and is also good for large structural items. So when we have to weld frames, furniture, even artistic pieces, it is a very quick and efficient process, very easy to learn and provides very strong structural weld. Let's also talk about some design considerations for welding. Welding itself is not a precise operation. The heat from the weld can cause your part to either shrink or push or pull, so things move around as you weld them. So you want to be really mindful about how you set up your parts to be weld and the order of what you're welding them in. You also want to make sure you design the parts so that the welding gun can actually fit into the areas you want to weld, as well as the fact that you can reach all the areas you want to weld. A very common thing is to use a lot of clamps and fixtures to hold your part together so that when you weld it, everything stays square and aligned. As with anything in the shop, feel free to ask a staff member for any help if you have a question about your project or even if you want a design review before you weld your project so we can get, help you get the best results possible. So before we start, let's talk about safety real quick. There's a couple key things to know when you're MIG welding. Number one being that the light MIG welding produces is very bright, almost as bright as the sun, which as you can imagine is not very pleasant to look at. So we're gonna have these welding hoods. Uh, these auto darken so that you can see your workpiece. And when you start welding, the lens darkens so that it protects your eyes. The light from wood melting is actually also UV, so that could cause sunburns, so you wanna make sure you're wearing long sleeves. As well as these green uh, welding jackets are made out of fire retardant material, so that it protects your skin and your clothes from the sparks that come off the welding gun. In addition to all of that, I'm gonna be wearing welding gloves that are gonna protect my fingers, and also make sure that if I rest my hand on something hot, I'm not gonna burn my skin. MIG welding produces a lot of heat and your entire workpiece is gonna be very hot, so you just wanna be really careful about what you touch and you wanna wait for things to cool off before you touch them. Okay, so up next, let's talk about the machine and some of the stuff we have to do with the machine before we can start welding. So we have these Miller Multimatic uh, 220 machines. They're fantastic welders. The cool thing about these machines is they do MIG, TIG, and SICK welding all in one machine. In future videos, we'll talk about the other features, but today we're gonna to focus about MIG welding. On the machine on the left here, you're gonna to wanna to select MIG C25. What that means is that it's gonna select the MIG welding process as well as the C25 gas, which is plugged into the back. Uh, it's 25% carbon dioxide and 75% argon, and that's the shielding gas we're gonna use. So the type of MIG welder we're doing today is meant only for steels. It is also possible to MIG weld aluminum, but that requires a different process. And again, that will be in a future video. The cool thing about these machines is that if you're new to welding, they have something called the auto set feature. You click this top middle button right there, and this puts you into a mode where you simply select the material thickness you're welding, and the machine does all the settings for you. So today we're gonna to be welding eighth inch steel. So we're just gonna make sure we select eighth inch steel. Once we do that, it's gonna give our settings and you should be able to start welding. Key things I wanna note is that the two settings that are user adjustable is the voltage and the wire feed speed. The voltage controls how hot your weld is, and the wire feed speed controls how fast the wire comes out. If you notice that the weld isn't forming correctly in our material, you might need more voltage. Also, if you notice that the wire is burning away too quickly, you might need more wire feeds. These are settings that as you weld, you'll start to learn and be able to recognize the issues of when you need more wire or more voltage and et cetera. So that's the machine stuff. Now we're gonna talk about the accessories you're gonna be using. So we have the MIG welding gun right here. This has a trigger that then starts the welding process. And there's also the grounding clamp. Now, for big welding to work, you have to have a complete circuit. So the grounding clamp has to be connected to the workpiece or a table that's conducted through your workpiece. Generally speaking, with our welding tables, if you put the clamp on the table, you're gonna be good to go. Now, with the MIG button, as soon as you hit the button, wire and gas is gonna flow out of the nozzle and that will start your welding process. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay some beads across our material. It's gonna be a very simple process and just kind of get you started with how the gun's supposed to feel and how the weld's supposed to go. Like I said earlier, you wanna make sure you have your grounding clamp hooked up to your table and table's metal so it's gonna be conductive to your parts. With the welding gun itself, you're gonna to wanna to hold it directly perpendicular to the material and you wanna about a 10 to 15 degree lead angle while keeping the gun about a half inch away from the material. The hardest thing you have to really do is maintain that distance from the material and be going in the right direction. 
The machine feeds out the wire and it controls the current and voltage automatically, so it does a lot of the work for you, but you have to simply maintain a good position as well as a good working speed. Going too fast or going too slow will give you poor results as well as also having the gun drift away from the material. So you always wanna make sure you kind of know where you're going and you have a plan. Now, before you weld, you're gonna also wanna put on your PPE. Now at the shop, we have some scrap metal. So feel free to ask for a staff member, we will point it out for you. So before we start welding, what I like to do is I like to take my welding gun and dry run a couple of uh, practice runs. I usually, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand to support the gun. And I wanna make sure that I can reach all the areas I'm trying to weld. This is good to do because the more comfortable you are, generally speaking, the nicer your welds will come out. For the first attempt, I'm just gonna simply go in a straight line at a fairly slow pace, and you're gonna be able to see the weld for me on top of the material. Okay, so once I'm comfortable, we're gonna get started. And don't forget to put your hood down. And as simple as that, you've done your first weld. Again, the workpiece is gonna be really hot, so you wanna be careful. So after you've done your first weld and it looks okay, you just wanna probably do a few more and get a hang for it. Now, once you've practiced running a few beats, one of the things you can do to give that dime look that a lot of welds have is you simply move the gun in spirals. This will create little pellets of weld and is often used for joining joints together. So if you wanna go ahead, you can also do some practice on that. Watch your eyes. We also want to talk about some of the common mistakes we see newer welders make, as well as experienced welders sometimes. Number one being that as they're welding, the torch gets higher and higher from the workpiece. This can cause your weld to get sporadic, as well as you'll lose your shielding gas, causing your weld to corrode rapidly. You want to make sure that you're maintaining a comfortable position, so you maintain that roughly half inch torch distance from your welding gun to your workpiece. And number two, it's usually going too fast or too slow. Going too fast means you're gonna get a very thin weld that's not gonna be very strong. Now, if you go too slow, you're gonna usually get a really thick weld that could also possibly melt through your material. And then lastly, another common mistake is that you're using the wrong settings for your material. So if you possibly are melting through your material or not having enough power to melt your material, you generally wanna double check your settings on the machine as well as the material thickness you're welding on and make sure it is what you think it is. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about joining two pieces of sheet steel together to create a 90 degree T-joint. This is a very common joint in welding and probably should be the first one you practice. So this table, as you can see, has a million holes in it. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to drop clamps anywhere there is a hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pieces down and I'm gonna grab my clamp from the uh, cart of clamps. And then all these clamps, as you can see, have a rounded bottom that's gonna drop into one of the holes. I'm going to slide the clamp down, position our material over the clamp. That's going to hold your part very securely, allowing you to weld on it. Uh, if this now required a lot of precision, you can use rulers and a square to make sure that the part is clamped exactly how you want. Because this is just a demo, I'm not going to be too concerned about that. So now typically, once you have your part clamped and secured, what you want to do is you want to tack the ends of the part. Tacking refers to just putting one bead of weld in to hold your part in before you start welding. Now you want to tack both ends to make sure that as you're welding from one side to the other side, the heat doesn't cause your part to warp. Okay, so let's go ahead. So I just want to make sure I'm comfortable. I'm just going to tack the uh, left and then the right side. Cool, once our part is securely tacked, we're now gonna be able to weld across it. When you're tacking the ends of parts, I just wanna note that you wanna be careful not to weld onto the table. Now, for welding a T-joint, you generally have two choices. 
can either go in an up and down motion, like a rip saw, or you can go in a cur uh, squirrel pattern, like drawing cursive E's. A lot of the preferences are just personal choice, so I recommend trying both and deciding whatever works better for you. Uh, for the most time, I like to do curly E's, and that's how I just have learned and prefer to weld. So let's do that. Once you're done, you want to just take a look at it, make sure you're happy with the weld, it's in the right place, it looks like it's penetrated into the material, and that it's doing what you want it to do. But once you're all done, you just want to make sure you're going to put away all your clamps and all your materials. You also want to make sure that you wait for your material to cool off before you touch it. It's going to be very hot. So welding is really just all about practice. So the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. You're going to find that MIG welding is pretty, well, uh, pretty quick to pick up. You should be able to get fairly proficient in about an hour or two's worth of practice and you'll be on your way to joining together metal. Yeah, there's a lot that we have not talked about. This was just a quick overview of the MIG welding process. Um, there's all kinds of different welding techniques, all kinds of different joints you can do, but as we just want to get you started. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask any of our staff members. We'll do our best to help you out. But thanks for watching, and we hope you learned something today.